Hello everyone, how are we all doing? It's good to be back, and even better to have you all back. Once again, Teenux on tour. Up the Teenux! First stop at Lodge Farm, absolutely, is the calf. They make the most amazing breakfast. Make sure you have a bite. So, a rare video of Thistle. I only get to fish this on festivals. So my last video was on the festival last year. I had, I think, £18.4 or something. My aim is to try and beat that this year. Let's see how we got on. So I've drawn peg 45. I've got a lovely corner chuck. So I'm going to throw a 20 gram hybrid feeder into there. I'm going to do two minute chucks and see how many I can get out in the first hour. So here I am looking at the timer. Just about to look at the rod. And oh, it's man. already around. Simply lovely. Didn't even get to press start button on the stopwatch. Looking That's how quick that fish took that bait. What? Looking at my phone and rod nearly went. So a lot of these fish average between one and three pound, but pound for pound they are some of the most insane fighting fish. So when I throw into that corner, and it looks like I'm dragging them fish out with the rod, that's exactly what I'm doing. Because if you give these any kind of space to get into them reeds or anything, that's exactly what they will do. So you've got to get them on, and get them out as fast as you can. fish on so what the plan is keep throwing into this corner on two minute chucks and ping four mil pellets over the 13 meter line once I see carp coming up regular for those pellets I'm going to leave this chuck and I'm going to go straight over that line and try and catch these carp shallow I think it's the quickest way I think you get the bigger fish as well and I think if I'm going to get anywhere in this match that's where I'm going to get it So a bit of a close up there so you can see that there is a gap between those reeds that and that's where I'm throwing. Accuracy is key. It's something I've worked on a lot this year with the rod. It's something I'm becoming a lot more confident in. And you can find fish like this within two minutes. So, you know, if you don't use the rod a lot, if it's a weakness of yours, really start practicing with it it has really made a big difference to how i fish and how i think about my matches now it allows me to rest the pole line as well which is something i weren't able to do before and and still catch fish still keep that net ticking so it's something i was really happy with in this match i felt like i got all this absolutely spot on another fantastic joke exactly where i want it to be simply lovely He says, limping rod nearly went down. Well, if you're one. enjoying the video so far, please give it a like. I am on my mission to 500 likes on a video. Very close on some of them. Maybe yeah. we can make this one the video. 
if you haven't subscribed already please hit that subscribe button it is completely free and I don't want you to miss any of my future videos Swally thank you nearly ripped me flipping rod off. You don't do bad. You have as many corner pegs as I do anyway. You do. I feel when I drew a corner peg, you drew one. And then on there, you drew a corner peg. You were like Ninja Warrior in that peg, with all tyres and everything else. Getting round it all. You are there. You and Neil would do well on that. So that's me and Beastie that you can hear having banter with. You will get this in a lot of matches, especially if you meet regular anglers. I do fish at quite a lot of different venues, believe it or not. And you do come across lots of absolutely fantastic anglers, of which Beastie is. And um, just trying to get in each other's heads, really. It's just part of the game. He's a super nice guy, unbelievably good angler, can get a hundred pound out from any way he puts his floor. Oh god, they're getting smaller. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've got lots of fantastic anglers in my section, uh, which were good. It, it let me see where I were in the angling world as well. Uh, lets me see how other anglers do certain things, see if there's something I can get from that, something I can put into my game as well. So these festivals, competitions, really important to you. Um, it's where you do learn so much of that quality, quality fishing that you need in your game. So if you've never done a festival or anything like that, start taking part in them. Don't be afraid to get humbled, let's say. Um, but you will get better each time. I am going to keep coming to these festivals. I'm going to keep joining more and more festivals. And um, I was on one at Swanlands recently cool and I managed to get third that was actually after this festival and there was stuff that I learned in this festival that helped me get third in that one so it's time to get on the slapping line at 13 meters here they are the Teenook 0.3 slapper you see them in loads of my videos they've won me lots of matches they are fantastic I just have four number eights underneath it I'm gonna have a six mil banded pellet on I'm going to ping four mils in round it. Let's see how we got on. So I've added a lot more clips into this video just because I only get on here once a year. I want it to give you a really good idea of, you know, how I caught, um, what kind of fish you can expect to catch. What I would say is there's a lot of us fishing up in the water on this match and the anglers that did the best definitely were on banded caster and feeding casters. I didn't take any with me. However, that is something I will definitely look to do on the next one. But I have opted for pellets, which is what a lot of anglers do, especially if you're gonna feed like, or fish like a club match where maybe the match winnings are much smaller I mean, getting six or seven pints of casters is not going to be cost effective. If you're there just for the fishing and you can afford to just chuck that kind of money at it, absolutely, buy a gallon of casters. But when we're in these little open matches and club matches, it's not going to be cost effective to do that. But truthfully, in a festival where the match winnings are large, casters absolutely the way.
So with the slapping, I tend to slap it three or four times on the water, wait till it settles, give it a few seconds once it's settled, and usually you've got a bite, just like that. Now instantly you just see me catapult some pellets out there, and I will continue to do that while I'm playing that fish. I want to keep drawing those fish into that area and keep them away from all the other anglers and stay with me basically. So as soon as I've landed that fish, gone back out, I get straight onto another fish again. So I'm on white hydro, which is like a number 10 elastic. I'm on a 0 0.15 up length, 16 Kaiser nook with a banded pellet. Really simple fishing. And the only thing I'm going to change throughout this match is if I feel I'm getting liners, I'll shallow up a bit more. And if I feel like the bites have slowed down when I've shallowed up, I'll go deeper. And this is it basically, you're just chasing the fish up and down. I probably wouldn't go deeper than four feet. It's a, you know, it's quite deep here, but that's like the deepest shallow fishing I will do. Um, ideally, you want to try and get them within a foot or even less if you can. Though that's not always so easy. I find when you've got a bright sky like this, the, the pole often spooks the fish. And a good way around that is having like a really long lash, like a mugging lash, flick that out in front and cut it that way. However, these fish were happy to come to the slap and I prefer to catch them that way. It's quicker for me and quicker fish means more weight. So yeah, the only thing I'm gonna do is go shallower and deeper, but just keep pinging at this line. So that fish is in epic condition, stunning carp. And you can tell straight away that the quality of carp has definitely got bigger compared to what I was catching on the deck in that corner. And this is why you have to target the bigger fish. The idea of max fishing is the most weight, not the most fish. So you gotta find those big dogs. And they're definitely up in the water. You got me? Oh no.
Great, pal. So that was an epic take. You could literally see the big round like pool of water that emerged as soon as it took that pellet. Always an epic sign when you're shallow fishing. That means it's hit it pretty much straight away as soon as it's hit that water. Great sign. That's what you want. That means you're really, really up in the water. Now Daz to the left of me, he is absolutely emptying it as well. He's fishing shorter actually, I think he was on like top kit plus two or maybe top kit plus three and he's fishing like deep shallow and just throwing pellets at it and he's oinking them out so I've gone for the longer range effort and he's gone for the shorter range effort and he's the only one really that fished short shallow uh, and I have to say he's definitely out, out catching me at the moment they do fish it a lot more regular than me, I mean Daz is part of the Burcoats Club. They fish on this all the time. I literally only fish on this in a festival. Ooh. So this is this like the second but time I've fished it. Eye. I'm learning on the day, which is no problem. I prefer it that way. Whenever I go to a venue, I don't ask anybody how to fish a venue. I just ask what Let fish are in it. it and how big they are just so I know I've got right elastics and, oh, and right hook lengths and stuff like that for it. Like Other than that, mouth. You know, fishing is different day by day, match by match. It's about figuring out whether they want it up in the water, mid water, on the deck, what kind of bait they're wanting at that point. So what happened last year is really not going to work again a year later. The dynamic of each pond changes so much so quick. So, I prefer to figure it out on the day. So I've just brought that fish to midway. The elastic is dealing with it, no problem. It's got a lot of fight, so I don't want to bring it in too close too quick in case it wants to get around my net. So in the margin reeds, they are notorious for it. Like I said, these fish have so much fight. So I'm happy to keep a midway and just keep feeding that long line with the catapult. As I say, in my personal opinion, you have to keep putting that feed in if you want to keep drawing fish into your area. The moment you slow that down and the other anglers around you are putting it in, they've got no need to stay with you, they'll just go wherever the food is going. Another good sized carp, at least three pound. And these were really about as big as it got. There's nothing, or oh, I didn't see any, which were really any bigger than that. There is also a huge amount of hide in here, which are like a pound plus, definitely worth targeting. But on this day, the majority of fish that were caught were definitely carp. They bullied the hide out. They were really wanting that feed going in.
Oh yeah, but it, I can't hit. They're not taking it properly. That's why we call it fishing and not bagging. Come on, brother. This little carp is a perfect example of just how angry these fish are. They're just little mortars. I don't know what is wrong with them. They're just like on steroids or something. Yeah, what we need. They just never stop fighting. So if you do fish on this lake, prepare for battle. Because if you take these lightly, you'll be in for a shock. Yep, that's how you do it mate, that's the trick. Don't tell everybody else about that though. Yeah, otherwise they'll stop buying me float. You don't actually need a float, you just need to moan one off. So this carp actually took the bait just as I was about to pull the pole out to re-slap again. That does sometimes happen, 
you get a certain timing when you're doing this and the fish also react to that certain timing after so long so yeah I nearly flung that carp to the sky but <laughs> this is why we have the right elastic on yeah luckily for me it took it just as I was about to pull it out and re-slap again Call me a lad. Mm. Not getting any. <laughs> so you've just seen me miss the first bite, re slap three times, settle, and hit a fish all within a few seconds. That is how lethal this method can be. That's a better fish. It's the best fish so far, that. About three and a half. Oh yeah, I want it mouth. We'll soon find out.
So that time you've seen me just do a single slap and then catapult around it. So sometimes if I feel like I put a lot of bait in without a fish, I'll stop feeding. Because I know there's some fish there, but I'm not getting enough reward for it. I need to be getting a fish quite regular. So I'm not going to put anything else in until they start coming onto it. So as soon as I left it for a little bit, realised they weren't reacting to it, instead of slapping it again, I just catapulted over the floor and this created a bite and fish on. I don't even know how that fit in its mouth, it's barely got a mouth. rubbish so what's happened is with the last two minutes to go i've just lost a fish at the net absolutely fuming i've picked up the rod i'm going to throw it into the corner because i know i can get a fish within two minutes my idea was to fish in this corner for the last hour of the match however because i was getting some good fish up in the water i decided to stick at that i do regret that because i only got about 20 pound in the last hour and i do think i, I could have got maybe 40 50 pound out of this corner in the last hour so i really should have thrown in but here we are we're in the last two minutes <sighs> bloody edge with feeder This time, fish yard. I know I'd get one if I throw into the air in two minutes. Oh, I knew I should have gone into that bloody corner. I need to do it on here. 
Yeah, don't be chucking them back in because you might be getting more weight than they should be getting. That goes up to 66, that. that'll tell you if it's over. Strong now, isn't it? Getting good weight. Eight pounds, nine ounce. Thank you very much. You've got more than me then. So why are you lying for? Hang on, hang on. Don't Well done, mate. What did you need? 24. <laughs> Not fell in. You're not fell in? Not fell in for the last three days. Congratulations. I went farther with Tommy Turner with fish 16 of the Felipe. Oh, that's unicef, isn't it? 37 on my back. Well, that might have. Look, coming out from our region. It was rigid. What was that for him? Done. Yeah. Didn't hold on. Didn't hold on. did my head in. You were catching shallow and I couldn't. Still got me nowhere, mate. I think I'm about six on pond. 45, nine. My belly can laugh. What about the phone now? Yeah. <laughs> Put on your shoulder. Top of that now. People only see my third now. Top of that now. I was going to try and worry him again, but I think he's been sat, sat watching me catch now. <laughs> 
You're going to see his video on vlogging whatever he puts it. I've had no. I've had no, don't worry. Yeah. 93 one ounce. Yeah, you will fall off. Uh, mate, it's tremendous, that man. That's a 50 pound net. That's a 50 pound net. 40. 49.6. 47. What did I say? What did I say? You I went about 45 minutes without a fish. I'm old and I've got dementia. I've <coughs> got a got in me there. 34.1. I got a skimmer slapping. I nearly slapped the skimmer. Fucking jump out skimmers and all, right? Clicked them at 40 to make sure they were going to be no airs. Seven pounds, twelve. Yeah. Forty-five eight. There's only about fifteen in this one. This will be rubbish last hour. Should have thrown into the corner no more. Oh, I'll take that. Nice to get a ton. Yeah, they're nice there. My Daiwa ones are all metal like that. But I quite like them new Matrix now.
Ted will be bang on. Right here. Yeah, get about one, four, five. Mm. Yeah, two. Good flicking there. Right your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beach is ever though, they always have a beast, don't they? Oh, yeah. 49 2. <laughs> <laughs> See how much he's lied by. Yeah, Lion Nick. It's Lion Nick. The little liar. How many of these did you get that margin? No. Oh. One. Sorry, one. Six. Six. Well done, mate. Said 140, 136. So these are the weights. Not bad at all. Some really good anglers. It came through. The weights were fantastic. Caster absolutely dominated on the day. Mac and Jubby, both on that. Both done really well throughout all three days on the festival. I've stuck to the pellet. £110. I think I could have had an extra 20 or 30 in the last hour, but it is what it is. Massive thank you to the Party Mix crew. It is Marty Makings Festival, but he definitely could have not done it without Daz Eaton or Mick Shanks. Thank you for running it so well and making it an event that I'm really looking forward to next year. If you would like to use any of the floats you see me using in any of my videos, go onto Facebook, like this page, I'll approve it. £1.35 per float. £1.35 one off delivery 
We post daily, don't miss out on a bargain. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed the video. We won't get another one here until next year, so if there's anything you need to learn or pick up, hopefully you've got it all from that video. And until next time, tight lines and sithy. Hello, your call cannot be taken at the moment, so please leave your message after the tone.